Good morning and welcome to Postulations with Chris. Join us every other Wednesday at 8.15 a.m. right here on Facebook Live, where Chris Gustin, Senior Pastor of Eastern Heights Baptist Church, will answer questions submitted by you. We all have questions that we want answered, and this is an opportunity for you to submit those questions either through Messenger on our Facebook, you can email us at the church, or we have a box inside the church if you'd like to submit your questions that way. Chris has no idea what these questions are, so we are always thankful for his knowledge and the opportunity to ask him these questions and have them answered. So sit back and enjoy. If you think this is helpful to someone else, we ask that you please share this message out, share this show, and we look forward to seeing you every other Wednesday at 8.15 a.m. on Facebook Live. Now let's get ready for some questions with Postulations with Chris. I believe. How are you doing? Well, I would ask if they could hear, but yeah. Can you hear? <laughs> can you hear? Can you hear us? Are you, are you out there? Yeah. <laughs> we just had the sun come shining through. We didn't have the sun shining through, and now it's all sun shining through for us this, yes. this morning. Yeah, all cloudy and now nice and sunny. So it looks like it's going to turn out to be a beautiful day. Natural light. Yeah. Well, what's going on? Not well. Not much. I mean, I'm excited about spring is is coming. And making it through winter, and so that's that's. Um, it's officially uh, here. That, spring. Yeah, spring is officially here, but in southern Indiana, that doesn't mean anything. It means it might snow tomorrow. Yeah, I, tech, really. It yeah, might snow, I went. Possible well, snow I went through like memories on Facebook, and you'll go one one year it's uh, I'm outside in short sleeves, and then the, <laughs> and the next year it was we had a snowstorm. Yeah. So and and then I'm I'm doing my usual. Every year I do this act of complete futility, but I, I do it anyhow, and that is to plant a garden. You know, I, did, so, I really didn't know you did that. Yeah, I do. I do every year. I plant a garden. It's, it's mm. a disaster. It's an absolute, just pitiful disaster. So I'm like, you know, um, when, when do I plant? When do I not? When you know, at what point? So this year I'm really striving. I'm going to try and do it from seeds. Hmm. Does yeah. anyone else know what's a garden? No. Oh, okay. No, Excuse. no. So one else goes, why are you growing weeds? You know, and I'm like, no, no. Yeah, it's pretty embarrassing. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's all right. I don't even attempt it. That's how bad yeah, I know see, I would be at you're it. Better, you're like, better, I don't better, even try it. You're a so. better man than me. <laughs> <laughs> so today, obviously this is a show where we ask Chris questions. And today, this yeah. one, like I did have something totally like I was going to go over, let you recap your sermon and make it. Somewhat easy because that's something you were would be front of mind because yeah. you just did that on Sunday, but I really wanted to mess you up a little bit oh, more no. than that. So okay, that's what I'm going to do. All right, all right, all right. So just and it's this was more for me. Like I was just because I always enjoy listening to and learning from you. I always learn something from this and take something away. Um, but so thinking back in your early, then and probably like your early days as Christian or when you were younger, and we're probably only talking okay. like two or three years ago, because okay. you're, you're quite young. Um, but in your early days as a Christian, some, some of the, either some things that you struggled with or just really could not grasp early on, like just did not make sense. Like it just totally like, you would read a scripture or you would hear something you're like that just I just can't that doesn't make sense to yeah. me versus the with a, a cup pick a couple of those things then and then at the end you get to tell me how after pastoring a church for several years and several more years of experience as a person but as a husband as a father and as a leader how those things have changed and how you've grown to understand those and maybe even what wow. helped you understand that? Wow. Bam! Wow! Yeah. So you got that whole long question, oh my but gosh. you get the gist. Oh my gosh! So okay. I'll give you a minute. Okay. Okay. Time's up. Okay. What? <laughs> no, just kidding. That was it. <laughs> that was all. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh! Okay. Great job, I, man! You, uh, I did learn something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I really need to get these questions ahead of time. That's what I need to learn. Uh, so okay. Um, so one of the things early um, as a Christian that was really hard for me to grasp was the idea that I couldn't lose my salvation. Mm -hmm. That was a real, real struggle. Uh, and the concept of 
I, I just I constantly felt like I, I was going to do something that would make me lose it. And so yeah. I was constantly fearful of that. And you know, one of the passages I would always go about, back to is that um, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ, neither life nor death, nor angels, nor demons, nor powers, nor principalities. Uh, but um, I, I still, you know, really struggle with that and that concept of how could God love me like that. And even though I knew the truth, you know, you can know something's true, but still struggle that it's yeah. true. Oh, yeah. That's the, I think that's one of the things as Christians we struggle right. with the most, right? Yeah. So some of the things that have helped me over time is to, especially as a, as a father, is to realize, you know, I love my children no matter what. And your children can do some things that can just really frustrate and upset you, but you don't stop loving them. You mm-hmm. don't, you don't, you know, I'm, I'm Sometimes you have to take tough decisions later in life, you know, on how you're going to relate. But still, even then, they're always your child. And suddenly I realized that concept of why it became so important to me to understand what it means to be a child of God. Mm-hmm. And then when I'm adopted into his family, oh, that's why he never abandons me, because now I'm his child. And so that, that really helped me with that concept and living that and then coming to understand that uh, was really important. Um, so I do it. I, like I don't want to. No. Since that was such a crazy question, I don't want to mess up your train of thought. But I do, there, yeah, I, there is no train of thought. It's, it's <laughs> There's just, a train. It's going it. in a circle <laughs> around the track. <laughs> Wait a minute. The cup. Yeah. Where'd you got, get that? Got this from our leadership. And why do I not have? It? I were you at the leadership meeting? No, I'm sorry. Well, I was working. Okay. You were you were making money while the rest of us were. Fooling around, not making money. So, <laughs> but you got a cup. But I, I got a cup. cup. You got a paycheck. All right. Sorry, I just. I hope I can that. take this to the bank. <laughs> that is nice, we can sell those. Hold that up. Look, you can buy those. Fifty dollars. <laughs> Fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you talk about it too, it was just like, but as far as losing our sanctification, but yeah. Sometimes, like I've learned over the years, for me, that like feeling that way also causes me to be judgmental and I don't know if that makes much sense but it's like maybe some things that I'm doing that would make me and I think obviously that's why we we can't lose it because we didn't earn it but like right. make me feel like okay well I'm not doing this like you know what I mean like when we start being like when we know we're in center we're concerned mm-hmm. about something some of our actions it's like, well, I'm still, I'm not doing that. Like, I don't know if that makes sense, but oh, I'm no, saying like no, it no. can yeah. cause you to be judgmental when you're, if we had to be worried all the time about losing our sanctification and how good we were and that it was up to us, we could be easily very judgmental, especially people outside of the church. Because mm-hmm. it's like, well, okay, I'm still good. I'm good, God, right? Because I'm not that person and I'm not doing this. And I'm not, I don't know. That yeah, was weird. I, that was a thought. I, that I, came no, to I always think about, that. I think about this with a level. Uh, you know, the level that you put on to make sure something's level. and I don't feel, uh, sorry. I don't, well, I don't really either. And um, <laughs> I, I, I'll try to, um, by sight, put something up and say, okay, th- this looks about, and I'll go put it in. And it's always off. My sight is always off. Hmm. And I'll put what I think is right now, put the level, and I'll see, oh, it's way off, and I have to adjust the wood based on the level. We with our salvation, if it's based, you know, on us trying to make sure we were saved, we would do just that. We would always evaluate it in a way that made us look good and made other people look bad. And with God, you look at it and you say, this is the perfect thing and you can't match this perfect thing. So then you understand I'm always dependent on God's grace. So, you know, uh, or I heard another story about where um, this guy found out someone was bad mouthing him. And someone came to him and they said, hey, such and such is saying all this bad stuff about you. And he says what it is. And he goes, oh, he says, if he really knew me, he'd know far worse. <laughs> you know, and that's that realization, <laughs> you know, oh, my gosh, you know, I'm not worried about what that guy's saying. That's he all he knows. <laughs> yeah, that's all he knows. You know, he doesn't know how bad I really am. <laughs> and and that's that's really humbling, you know, and goes, I, I understand how bad I am. I understand I'm evil, but I also understand God's grace, you know. So, yeah, it's when we stop thinking that we're bad. Um, or we're, or we're, we got sin in us that we stop appreciating what God's done. 
Yeah. And you talked about that a lot on Sunday. Yeah. Some similar to that. Yeah. It was tied yeah. into Oh, that. no, I, I go back to that a lot because yeah. it's, it's, it, we got to constantly remind ourselves. I mean, it'd be terrible if always to, if, if we stopped at you're a sinner and we just kept saying you're a sinner, you're a sinner, you're a sinner. What a depressing thing. But understanding you're a sinner then allows you to appreciate grace and mercy and you go, wow, how incredible that is. So you got to go to that rough spot. Uh, coming up on Easter, there's a great sermon, you know, that, that, that says um, you got to you got to go through Friday to get to Sunday. You got to go mm -hmm. through the cross to get to the empty tomb. And you got to go through your center to appreciate salvation. See, we can yeah. stop right there. Right there, there it is. We could, but we're not. Boom. <laughs> so, all right. So. That's one. So yeah. sanctification, you struggle with. It hurt. I gotta, I gotta quit doing that. Yeah. <laughs> well, it hurt your hand. It hurt your hand because you're hitting solid steel. I'm getting old. <laughs> Why is your chest still painted? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Just kidding. All right. So obviously that's one. Now. Okay. Oh no, another one. You're, you're, no, that's the that's the question. There, I would just curious, like some other things. So that, um, that you had a hard time because there are like. Especially as early when you're when you first, or even when you just start understanding and trying to understand and hearing I God, think, like I'll, there's I'll, some stuff that you I'll think you it's one. like, wow, this that just doesn't make sense. Like I don't understand how that could possibly be. I'll give you one that I'm still struggling with. Yeah, and that's a Trinity. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's uh, last night uh, I was reading on the Trinity, and mm -hmm. it's just it is a, it's, again it's a concept I know that's true. Uh, but I, but I only know it's true because of the revelation that God has given to reveal Himself and say this is this is who I am, uh, and, and in such a way that our minds can understand it. But there's like uh, so much aspects of it that uh, it's so easy to. What's funny is we struggle to understand it, but we do a really good job of misunderstanding it, mm, <laughs> and so yeah. we can mess it up more than we try to get it right. Uh, and so that's been one over time is just uh, being around other Christians and being able to talk about that has allowed me to grow more in understanding that. And, I, and there's some of these concepts in Christianity that we only really grow in understanding by being around other Christians and listening to them. And if you separate yourself, you're just kind of this lone Christian, and I'm just going to try and figure all this stuff out on my, on my own. You're, you're more than likely going to slip into error uh, because you're just you're, you're going to convince yourself that something you, you think is really right when if you're around other Christians they can sit there and go yeah but let's look at this passage or let's look at that and so I find other Christians are very beneficial mm -hmm. in uh, helping me uh, do that and I'll give you one more and this is a controversial one I should, probably shouldn't do it but you um, mute it and you just tell yeah, me well, I'll, I'll say it anyhow mm -hmm. yeah uh, but that is that there is more than one way to understand end time passages. Mm. You know, I kind of I kind of grew up, and there was this kind of one way that they were teaching the end times, and it didn't it didn't seem to satisfactorily answer questions. But that's that's it. You know, this is how it's <laughs> supposed to be. We're going to put a verse here and a verse there. We'll pull a verse from over here and we'll arrange it like this, and. Then, as I got older, and I come to find out that historically, through the two thousand years of the church, there's been different ways of understanding that, and it's okay. And that was very um, enlightening for me to to realize that there is a number of different ways to look at these eschatolog eschatological passages and, and understand them, and that that's okay. And we really shouldn't fight over that. That is not an issue to fight over. And yeah. it, you really need to be more concerned about your own eschatology, your own end, and what's going to happen when you die. Then you really, then you really should overly be concerned about: is there going to be a one-world government, or <laughs> is my credit card, you know, the mark of the beast, or <laughs> you know, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, <laughs> uh, you know, whatever? Because every generation, by the way, and this is a funny thing: is every generation throughout history for two thousand years has associated that they were the final generation. Oh, yeah. And have associated yeah. something as matching each of those things. And it's really hilarious when you go through church history. You'll look and you'll go, oh, well, they were wrong. They were wrong. <laughs> and then we get to us and we're like, so this is it. 
Well, you know, I hate to say the odds are you're probably wrong. Only yeah. one, only one group's going to be right, and uh, so quit, quit trying to figure out that stuff, and and instead talk about your own eschatology. What is my relationship with God, and how's my salvation? But it was refreshing to find out that there is, there's more than one way to read that and to understand it. Now you yeah. shake people up sometimes with that because they're just so staunch on it, and you're like, why are you so staunch? And I guess the reason why we are is because there's only one way to prove who's right. Hmm. And okay. so you can be staunch on it and fight <laughs> over it because you know, I'm not gonna be proven wrong. You know, by the time you prove me wrong, it isn't gonna matter. So then I can really fight it. You ever notice that, that we fight over things that you really can't prove are right or wrong? Yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah, we just, we, it's most so, of it really. Yeah, 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 we just, you know, and it's just a bizarre, why are we, why are we fighting over this, I don't. Yeah, it's because our right is always right. Yeah, and we can't. <laughs> and their wrong is always. We wrong. can't be proven wrong, <laughs> so we can just plow ourselves through how right we are, and and because we know no one can ever prove us wrong. So, yeah, I mean, I, that's a weird, weird place to be. I was even like this morning. I was reading back through the start the scriptures that you talked about on Sunday, but even just looking at that, like I get compl- like you're talking about like in time, in times, and I'm talking yeah. about like I was reading. I was like, okay, so. Every like when you die, you immediately go to heaven. But then I read like about the resurrection, and then there will be a time when we will all raise. And I'm like, yeah. wait, are we waiting to? Will we be raised all at the same time and go up, or like, because you know, like I always think like yeah. when somebody passes, they're up, they're up in heaven with God. That's what we say. So right, yeah, the beyond the that, body but, is to be present with Christ. You're right. Yeah. So, but then I just get yeah, I get confused with that. It's like, okay, are we actually there? Or are we just, yeah. just waiting, and then we will be there? Or we're immediately there, like that. But how, why does it really matter? How do we interact dead, with guess. those who are dead? And yeah, oh yeah, it's, hmm. it's it's. I think sometimes we we look at stuff and we go, why didn't God give us more information? And then I think, well, because we really couldn't understand. It's going to be so incredible. Yeah. We're 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 not that it. We take it already and we kind of reduce it down to. And I know we say this jokingly, but we have to be honest about it. It's like. You know, Jimmy dies, and we say, well, Jimmy's up there on the Heavenly Golf Course now playing. And it's like, I, I understand what you're saying, but really, we've reduced heaven down to a, an 18-hole golf course. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but a really nice one. But really not a really, yeah. really nice one. Got, you know, but, but no, <laughs> but no sand pits. Uh, is that, we don't. We, don't we, we take stuff that's incredible, and then we reduce it down to manageable ways of understanding. To try to understand yeah. it, I guess. But then we but then we in doing that and trying to understand it, we communicate to other people hmm. a false understanding. Yeah. So then someone's like, Well why would I want to die and go to a golf course? That'd be horrible, you know. <laughs> and when you said the you were talking about the Trinity earlier, that's another one that like I mean obviously we don't have a problem understanding who God is. Yeah. That's that's not the hardest one. And then we can understand who Jesus is, but the Holy Spirit seems to be one that we don't. You actually you do because I was list, I had listened to some stuff and some podcast stuff earlier a week or two ago, and this guy was just talking about we don't. But you talked in your sermons and you referred to the Holy Spirit a lot. But a lot of people stay away from that because it just oh yeah. And I don't know. I mean, it doesn't make sense. I can just understanding that that is when Christ. Direct, he left it like he's he left us the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And how we get the Holy Spirit, we know that is by accepting Christ, and then we have the Holy Spirit in us. So just but that is something that's like thinking about that God is in. I mean, yeah. obviously we're creating his image and there's all kinds of scriptures to back that, but just if we thought in that way through everything, through wins, struggles, through everything, but understanding that he's there, like He's there when you flip that person off when you're driving. Yeah. You know what I mean? You think you're in the car by yourself and you're riding and you get upset and you flip somebody off or, you know, you get into an argument with one of your kids or your spouse and you walk off and you mumble something. It's like they don't hear you. No one else hears you but the Holy Spirit. God is in you and he yeah. He hears you. And like it, and he, he it, still it, hears you, but, but it, he's yeah, literally it's in us. It's That's a weird crazy. concept. And it's again, it, it's one of those things, unless, unless it was revealed in the scriptures... I don't think we would fully comprehend it. 
And if you go talk to somebody who's outside of Christianity, and you, you try to explain to them, well, I've got a spirit inside of me. You know, people are like, wow, yeah, okay, yeah, you know. <laughs> it, it sounds like, like I'm possessed by an alien. And uh, it, it is. It just sounds bizarre and strange, and you have to understand in light of the scriptures, but you're exactly right. You know, it's like, hmm. and, and what part of that, so as I go to make decisions, what part of that is, you know, my sin nature at work in me? What part is that the Holy Spirit convicting me? How does my consciousness, conscience, you know, work in all of that? And how is, is the Holy Spirit working in that? And, um, it, yeah, it gets, um, it, it, it's hard to, hard to comprehend. It is. And that's, I mean, like, that's something lately that I've just been really focused on. Mm -hmm. And I've learned as I've tried to focus on this even more, but like, uh, we call it discernment or however you want, but yeah. like just in thinking different things or like before I respond to someone or make a decision, like there literally feels like there's two, you know what I mean? And yeah. I'm like, okay, so how I need to discern which one, like what's the God telling me, what's the Holy Spirit yeah. telling me here and what part of that is just me and discerning that is really hard. And I feel like I've learned that most of the time so far, I've lost because I've, I know like the, what I, the decision I made or the, the words I chose to say came out totally. It's like, I know that's not what God, God did not want this. <laughs> that's not how he wanted this person to feel or that's not how he wanted this to turn out. So obviously, I must have picked the selfish part or the, the mic part that wasn't, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It, but that is such a. Oh, and you yeah. don't have time sometimes when somebody just does something or something just happens. So I'm, I'm learning. What I've really learned yeah. is it's like the only way to be able to do that is you really just have to stay in prayer and stay in the scriptures. And he tells you, and it's his word tells you. Yeah. And then when you feel that two voices speaking, you know which one <laughs> is God because you can relate it to the scriptures and, and, mm -hmm. and you're in prayer and you're in relationship and you can t and it's I'm learning that's the key is so I'm learning that in order to understand to be able to do that more I haven't I haven't been in prayer and focused enough on the scriptures to be able to discern yeah. that does that make that oh no 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 it's a statement like I heard uh, people use all the time but it's true in our spiritual life we got to front load we got to front load this stuff so you 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 you're reading the scriptures and you're praying and stuff. You're front loading yourself spiritually for when that time comes to making that statement. And if you're waiting till that statement shows up and then you're like, okay, tell me what I'm supposed to say or I'm supposed to say it. That's, you know, we often want to do it on the, on the end and yeah. then we want to go fix it. And, and that's great. We can, but really it's, it's front loading. It's preparing up here. Uh, and it, it's interesting. I find this, um, this is going to sound weird, but, um, I find that often when we are reading scripture, when we're studying scripture, uh, when we're involved in Bible studies, there's a Bible study I'm involved in, uh, that you you will suddenly find that whatever it is that you're doing, God will open opportunities to share that. Hmm. And it, it's kind of strange, but the, what you're studying suddenly allows you, you know, then an opportunity comes and you go, oh man, that's wild, because uh, uh, what you're talking about is really funny because I'm reading a book right now about the, the conscience and how does God use the conscience. Now, that wasn't like, hey, that sounds like a really exciting book. I think I'll <laughs> read that book. Uh, but I had it on my shelf and I pulled it off and I, I said, oh, I'll read this. I'll you know, see what this is. Well, it's funny because that's what we've ended up talking about for the past few weeks is about the conscience and about yeah. that idea of the good and the bad idea and what – Weird, you know, so I pulled this book this guy wrote and I'm reading it going, hey, that's interesting. And then we have to be on the show talking about it. And I'm like, oh, huh, that's that's neat how God does that. Yeah. And that again, that's sometimes that work in the Holy Spirit and you go, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I, don't, I have no, it's like, I can't tell how long we've been on. I don't know. So either. we're just going to talk to we're it and finish. Until right? <laughs> <laughs> the film oh, runs out. Oh, you have a watch. So, yeah, no, 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 watch. We run on the, the film, the film runs out to the end and I don't tell us, so. 
No, well that, that really is good stuff, but that gives us, I don't know if you answered the question I originally asked, but you did. You yeah, answered well, you know, it and turned it around two, a little two, bit. One of them is, you know, I, I struggle about, um, I, I, you know, struggled, struggled early on about understanding that you can't lose your salvation. Yes. And then um, the, the Trinity, Trinity is, which is, 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 yeah. is a line that I still, I find myself, you know, reading. And like I said, I, I find helpful talking to other Christians about that. That That is... Um, some of those those concepts that are out there um those, those are those two um one i have a, a better sense of the other one i, I know it's true and how right. it works but there's still um times i'll sit there and go yeah but okay you know if, if they're playing monopoly you know who who go, who gets to be the thimble yeah you know and you know what i think <laughs> and older uh, younger folks are going i have no idea what he's talking about on who gets to be the thimble so yeah they We'll probably end with this and you add to it, but that's one thing that I think that where we mess up, or okay, I'm going to say where I mess up Mm because nobody else probably does this, but it really is being humble and and honest enough because when we're witnessing or when somebody comes to us and they have a question, they're talking to us, like if it were about the Trinity, like Mm -hmm. somebody's like, Mm -hmm. hey, how did, it's like, for some reason, even though I really, like you, struggle, like I don't have a good way to explain it. I've heard the ice, heard the water, heard yeah. all different things, fire, whatever. I've heard all those things, but it's like when somebody asks that or anything about the scriptures that you really, that you believe, but you don't understand, like you can stand firm and believe it, but you don't have to try to explain it because sometimes we can totally mess somebody oh, up or yeah. lose our witness and... I don't know that there's anything wrong with saying, you know what, Chris, I have the same, like, I don't understand it either. But yeah. you know what? Here's the thing. I believe. Mm-hmm. And also, in, even in that way, by not being able to give the perfect answer, opens you up to be able to witness and share the gospel because it's like, I don't know, but here's what I do know. These are things that I've witnessed and these are things in my life that I, where I've seen God work. Yeah. And I'm like you. I don't understand exactly how the Trinity works. I, you know, I mean, it's okay to say you don't know sometimes. We have we feel like we have yeah. to know and answer everything, but we sometimes we ruin our witness and mess people up by trying to give an answer to something we don't even fully understand. Exactly. I call it a microwave theology. You, know, you get a microwave <laughs> and you put in a bag of popcorn, you shut the door and you hit the button, popcorn, and yeah. two and a half minutes later, you got popcorn. popcorn. Now, if you want me to explain to you how the microwave works and why that button happens to know to tell the microwave what to do, I can't. But what I can tell you is I got a bag of popcorn. Right. And, you know, we look at it and we say, you know, uh, once, I was, uh, once I was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Yeah. And then that, that's, that's what I know, I know to be the, the truth, and so I can show you that. I know someone that could explain the popcorn thing. Who? Probably Andrew. Andrew? Yeah, well. <laughs> he probably knows exactly how the popcorn he, works. He starts, expla- he, starts ex- <laughs> he starts explaining stuff, and I say, I don't want to hear your magic. Go <laughs> your magic. You wizard. Go away. My, my, so you don't know. My, my son's a physicist, so. Yeah. Yeah, so I just, yeah, I just tell him, I don't want to hear your magic. What do you mean you don't know how the popcorn works, yeah, Dad? Yeah, he doesn't know. Well, he's wrong with you. He doesn't know either. Oh, oh yeah. He, says, he, he knows theoretically how the popcorn gets popped, but it doesn't know in reality how it happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you have any questions with this, obviously yeah. you can reach us through the Facebook page, our, our website. I'll even put that up. Like you yeah. can somewhere. Hey, we got a great website. I know now. that. I have it right it's here. So it's Boom. It's right so there. It's the bottom of the screen. Yeah. Visit our website. Visit our website. It's so much better. You can find out a lot more about our church and who we are. Yeah, and we know you enjoyed this so much, like every episode's on the yeah. website. Yeah. You can just go watch it. You know, like how you binge watch? Yeah. You're looking for something to binge watch? This is it. This is it. And it's, <laughs> short, and it's shorter. So, and it's free. You don't have to pay a subscription or anything. Oh, that's good. All right. Well, we'll let you close right. in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, just especially how you reveal yourself to us and helping us to better understand you. But Lord, we also thank you sometimes for the mysteries that keep us humble. Lord, we pray this week that you continue to give us guidance and direction. And Lord, that we just be open to the working of your spirit. In your precious name we pray.
Amen. Amen. All right. We'll see you in two weeks. Two weeks. Have a great week.